All right, hello, welcome everyone uh, to this session. First up, we have Allison Moon from Thinkware, uh, who is speaking about Fairer Falkirk. Thanks. Okay, hi. Um, I'm here today to talk about um, the Our Falkirk project, which is an online community resource um, created with and for the Fairer Falkirk team at Falkirk Council, a local government organization in Scotland. Um, to support the work that they do to help minimise the impacts of poverty um, for those living in the Falkirk Council area. Um, it does this by providing information on where to find particular types of support in the area. Um, the tool was designed using open data, uh, specifically OpenStreetMap um, and open source technologies, which is why I'm here uh, to talk to you about it today. Um, I'll put up a slide at the end with lots of links and resources for anyone interested in finding out a little bit more, um, including the link to the Thinkware public GitHub repo where you can find um, all of the code. Um, there's also a wiki page, an OSM wiki page, um, with a bit more about some of the, the kind of tagging uh, work that we, we did. Okay, so just to provide some context really as to what we're talking about. Um, as I say, Falkirk Council is, uh, is one of 32 local authority areas in Scotland, um, located right in the centre of, of Scotland, with a population of just over 150,000 people. Um, in terms of poverty in the area, essentially it's, a, it's really on a par with the rest of the country. It's about average um, at around 20% of people living in relative poverty, um, but this is expected to rise. Where Falkirk Council doesn't match the national pattern is child poverty. Um, around 27% of children live in poverty in, in the Falkirk Council area, uh, which is quite a staggering statistic. Um, obviously, this has an impact um, on them day to day in terms of being cold, going hungry, not being able to take part in activities with their friends, um, but it also impacts their aspirations, their achievements, um, and also their health. Um, just to give you a couple of uh, statistics here provided by the Fair of Falkirk team. Um, by the age of three, poor children are estimated to be on average nine months behind children from more wealthy backgrounds. That's by the age of three. And by 16, children receiving free school meals achieve 1.7 grades lower in their end of year exams. Um, in work poverty is also a significant problem. So uh, ensuring that employers pay the living wage, that jobs are sustainable, that there's in-work progression. These all help to secure a person's future and their ability to plan ahead for themselves and their families. Um, just to cover the last point here, um, the team do expect that poverty rates will rise in the area <coughs> due um, in part to changes in the social security system, um, which are currently being rolled out, and it's estimated that around £62 million a year will be lost from the Falkirk economy um, once fully rolled out. So that's the kind of scale of the problem uh, that the team are facing with some really quite worrying statistics. Um, so in terms of the, the local authority, the, the local government response, um, obviously they have their Fair Falkirk team um, whose responsibility it is to, to try to sort of uh, ameliorate the situation. Um, and they, ha as an organization with partners, have uh, devised a, a strategy which has recently been refreshed for 2019 to 2024 uh, called Towards a Fair of Falkirk. Um, and this strategy recognizes that neither the council nor its partners are going to be able to lift those people out of poverty necessarily. Uh, what they can do is they can help to mitigate the impacts of poverty um, and, and mitigate these impacts um, on individuals and uh, children and families. So to achieve this, the strategy focuses on four key themes, fairer access to services, fairer culture, fairer money and fairer childhood. And this is underpinned by an action plan which details the steps to be taken to deliver across all of these themes. So in terms of fairer access to services, this is essentially the, 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 the theme of the strategy uh, in which the Fair of Falkirk um, project really sits. Um, they're looking to sort of help uh, provide access to money advice, access to food provision, such as food banks, which unfortunately in Scotland we have all too, 
too many of, but a real need for. Um, digital access uh, and community support. So these are, these are key support services um, to those facing poverty. Um, just to give you uh, a bit of an idea here, the, the, uh, the Fair Falkirk team um, identify that there is a £490 per year uh, cost of being poor. Um, so better digital access uh, can help to, to uh, mitigate that to some extent through things like online shopping, getting better deals on utility bills, better deals on uh, mobile phones, that, that sort of thing. Um, but it's, it's really providing access to those services that's quite, quite crucial. Um, there are a range of services available, not just through the council, but through its partners, through churches, community groups, schools, so on. But bringing that information together, uh, packaging it up and making it available to people in a way that is sustainable, that's flexible, that's cost effective, um, at a time when public sector budgets are squeezed to breaking point, um, that, that's the challenge. So obstacles to effective data sharing, well, budgetary is, 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 is significant um, in terms of bringing in external resource or utilising existing resource within uh, the local authority to, to, to kind of tackle um, these kind of issues of data collation and, and data custodianship and technical development support. Um, these are real issues, not just financially, but also in terms of skills and capacity. Uh, what we find working with local authorities is that due to shrinking headcount, very rapidly shrinking headcount, the staff that are there are taking on more and more areas of responsibility and there is no spare capacity to look at uh, some of these things. So, with that in mind, um, the project and the way it came about essentially was through the ODI, which is um, the Open Data Institute. It's uh, a non-for-profit, not-for-profit not -for -profit organization based in the UK, whose mission is to connect, equip, and inspire people around the world to innovate with data. And last year, they created a new stimulus fund to encourage better and innovative use of open geospatial data in the UK. Uh, and at Thinkware, this is something that we thought, fantastic. This, there's definitely got to be some uh, really exciting projects that we can sort of help to get going um, with that kind of support. So just to quickly tell you a little bit about who we are. Uh, we're an independent um, web mapping and GIS consultancy based in Stirling, again in the centre of Scotland. Um, we're specialists in open source GIS and uh, technologies and our sort of core platform, the Map Cloud, is kind of based on that full sort of open spatial stack, PostGIS, GeoServer, Map Proxy, uh, the, whole, the whole works. But while we're um, now a, a, a sort of private limited company, our history and our lineage is really uh, sort of rooted in the public sector in that we were a shared service for three local government um, organisations for a number of years before then in 2007 uh, sort of spinning off as a separate uh, sort of private company. Uh, so, you know, we, we have really close ties with local government a real understanding of the kind of issues and pressures um, that they face. We're also keen advocates and users of open data. Um, if you were here for the previous talk, you'll have heard um, from the uh, Hot OSM Tasking Manager team um, about their plans for version four of the Tasking Manager. Um, well, in 2017, we uh, at Thinkware um, redevelop the tasking manager, complete uh, rewrite, uh, all on uh, Amazon Web Services, so fully scalable, uh, lots more uh, in there in terms of uh, sort of user engagement um, and, uh, and so forth. And that, so that's that, something that as an organization we're, we're hugely proud of and also very excited to see where the, the now uh, hot uh, dev team are, are taking that. Uh, we also have members of staff working for Map Action um, on deployment and host regular Missing Maps events in Stirling. 
Um, so I, I suppose bringing that kind of sort of s the, our experience and our skills together, you know, obviously having working, worked closely with various local government um, organisations over many years and also um, working with OSM a good deal, we started to think about the problems associated with effective data sharing in local government um, and to think about the potential for OpenStreetMap to be used to open up access to information to local communities. And at this point, we approached Falkirk Council and their Fair Falkirk team with an idea which, thanks to the funding uh, provided by the Open Data Institute, then became uh, the R Falkirk project. So the aims are pretty simple. Uh, for the local authority, really what they were looking for is just to provide a simple web mapping application that makes information about local services available to people online. So that's both to uh, the members of the public, but also crucially to frontline staff, uh, you know, whether that be uh, a member of the local government working in a kind of public facing role, such as a kind of one stop shop, uh, or it could be a nursery nurse, it could be a teacher, it just could be people working uh, directly with members of the public who are then better able to signpost those people when in need to the services that they might um, be able to benefit from. So how does it fit together? Well, the central idea was to create a really lightweight application um, in which the data, both the background mapping data and the, the kind of feature data um, would all come directly from OpenStreetMap. So basically none of that data would need to be stored or managed or maintained by uh, the local government uh, organization, by the local council. Um, so what the application is doing is it's, it's using an API to dynamically search the OSM data set for features within that bounding box, within that uh, area that, map, that match a particular um, set of OSM tags, OSM attributes. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the tagging in a sec. Um, as I said, it's really light, right, lightweight. It's written using the React uh, frameworks hosted on AWS. So you just need somewhere to host that website. No database, no DBA, none of that. Um, and like I say, the code's on GitHub. So the, the hope would be that other local authorities could just pick this up and run with it themselves. Um, don't need specialist skills um, to maintain uh, or create data. Browser-based tools and a little bit of guidance. Um, which obviously we've provided directly to the um, Fair Falkirk team for them now to take that forward. But um, hopefully, you know, that means that the, it's much more likely that the data will be maintained, kept up to date, you know, by local uh, members of the public too, or, or other sort of partner bodies to make sure that as new services come online or as services change or potentially disappear, you know, um, that that will mean that the, the data is kind of live and current. Um, so it might not sound like anything that's too kind of out of the ordinary, uh, you know, obviously within this context, but for local government to be um, using that uh, kind of uh, approach, you know, obviously it's something, uh, it's a slight step change in terms of a perceived lack of control over data, but I think they were excited to give the approach a go. So I'm gonna have to push on. Um, so in terms of the data themes, uh, these were the teams that the, the themes that the the, uh, the Fair Falkirk team and their partners thought would give the best value, but also that they would be able to sort of fairly readily collate that information. Um, and like I say, these themes are essentially logical groups of OSM features uh, defined by logical groups of tags. Um, so in this case, these are the th but essentially the idea of a kind of theme within OSM is sort of you know it, it could be. Um, it could be used for any kind of purpose, really. Uh, so I won't say too much about that, but essentially, um, just to give you an idea, the, 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 the challenge for us, I think, because we're not experts in OSM, was really to define the best set of tags to use in each case, both to define those features and then also the attributes of those features um, that would be sort of relevant to an end user. Um, so we're not experts. <laughs> We're just really trying to uh, work with, or, or work on the basis that if we use the tags that are most commonly already in, in use, and uh, we used um, 
tag info extensively to research these tags. Um, we also had a lot of help and guidance from the OSM UK community and the top GB mailing list. Um, and they provided a lot of insight and input into how best to define um, a set of tags that, that would have a, a, you know, the most applicability and longevity. Um, so the idea is once we got these sort of groups of tags uh, defined, uh, and like I say, this is just the kind of, you know, the information about those features. Um, it was then really a, a question of looking at the data, um, enriching the data, both with new features um, and uh, new, new tags on existing features. What we did find was things like food banks. You know, it might be located in a church, and the church might be a feature within OSM, but that food bank, we might need to create our own feature to capture the information that's relevant to us because the opening times of a church might be different to the opening times of that food bank. We might need to you know, look at how we actually work with the data that's there and, and develop that to meet the needs um, of this. But essentially, once we've got that data into the database, uh, we're then looking at defining the theme within a config file, which is what the application uses. Um, it, 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 uh, that config file will sh determine, uh, well, it basically specify what the theme's about, the group of tags that comprise it, and how it should be displayed by the application. And then it uses it to sort of dynamically pull back the relevant features. Now, I'll have to go through this fairly quickly, um, but more than happy to cover any of this off at the end and make all these uh, materials available. But essentially, so that a theme, we're, we're kind of setting out a, a really lightweight schema that we think could be used in any kind of context, but obviously there's a specific context here, um, but it has sort of key elements to it. Um, metadata, the name of the person who's authored this, the description, the purpose, um, uh, then, you know, looking at the actual tags that define the types of features that we want to pull back, um, and the attributes that we might also want to pull back to display to the user, and how we're going to use, uh, how we're going to display that information within the application. So the icon to be used, the colors, so on. Um, and then we're using um, query overpass to, to get the data out of uh, the OSM database. So that's in a specific format. So that's actually encoded within the, within the theme as well. But yeah, like I say, the core idea of the themes is they should be shareable. You know, this is a, a sort of schema that sets out, it's kind of an exemplar really. And then um, but potentially, you know, those uh, schemas could be shared. They could be, you know, tweaked, adapted, um, and then and then used as needed in other contexts. So, like I say, the config file that then reads in the information from the database according to the parameters that are set out, and the application then determines what information it's going to, uh, you know, present to the user, because obviously we're we're working with data where we don't unlike in another context where you know you define the database schema we don't necessarily know what data we're going to get back um, but the config file helps to kind of work out based on the data that we do get back then what we're going to present to the user um, I'm running a little short of time so I won't do a demo but essentially it's super straightforward you know it's it's a really straightforward web app that the information's kind of organized by theme, and then you click on it and you see that little pop-up, and you can find out um, not just where it is and what its opening times are, but things like, you know, if it's access to computers within a, a public library, you know, do you need to be a member of that library? You know, does it have Wi-Fi? Is there printing? Um, and again, that's where the group did a lot of work to define what, uh, what attributes a user would actually be interested in finding out about different types of services. So, yeah, uh, whether or not there's printing, that's, that's relevant to a certain type of feature. Another type of feature uh, within a different theme, you know, there might be other bits of information that are much more relevant. So just to look at the, um, the outcomes of that, obviously the R. Falkirk uh, site is live and uh, in, in use, and I think the, 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 the team are, are really excited about the possibilities of it um, and are looking to develop it further. Um, I think what's kind of interesting is um, the fact that obviously the, the, the approach means that non-expert users can map uh, features within these themes. In terms of setting up the themes themselves, I think there's still quite a 
there's still a bit of a, a kind of learning curve to go through to do that in terms of what tags do you use, how do you do that, setting up the config file and so on. But um, you know, it's, it's all open, so it is, it's possible to do that. Um, it's just the tagging bit. Uh, you know, I think we found that that's where our learning curve really, really kicked in. Um, and again, kind of keeping overheads to a minimum in terms of IT and uh, sort of those kind of data management skills. Uh, that was something that was quite, um, you know, it was quite helpful for the for, for the local government organisation there to see that. Uh, from an OSM perspective, I think obviously the you know the data theme idea, you know, defining a logical group of features in OSM. I think that's something that could have wider applicability um, through the use and reuse of those um, that that kind of schema that's been set out. But you know, um, I think it's just something to, to that, that that you know probably needs more kind of input um, going forward. Um, but we kind of showed how you could use existing tags and extend these with new tags, um, with the aim being that those would become uh, more widely adopted. Um, I think what we found was that the, the kind of process for suggesting new tags and themes was not that clear. Um, you know, OSM is really flexible, but sometimes I think you're not quite sure where to start. Um, so in terms of just quickly future perspectives, like I say, Fira Falkirk, they're keen to expand the audience and also enhance the data content of the tool. So uh, furniture provision, um, children's activities, uh, even sort of possibly temporal or seasonal um, services. So um, summer and Christmas food projects, uh, school holiday programs. School holidays can be a real challenge for families on low incomes because they lose those free school meals that they would normally have through term time and so on. So uh, that's something that they want to, to look at further and take forward and, and work on the, on the kind of promotion of it. Um, in terms of how we might take this forward, um, in terms of um, OSM, you know, I think the idea that we, we had originally, though it didn't quite get to that stage, was um, a theme creation wizard and allowing people to you know, through a, some kind of uh, UI, define their own schema, uh, you know, give it a name, give it a description, you know, select the tags they want to use. Like I say, I think we're a bit away from that. I think we just need to think about how, how easy it is to kind of define those tags, I, I, you know, maybe a bit, a bit further down the line. Um, but also looking at further implementations, and I know that there was a, you know, a, um, a Bath Act event recently uh, down in the south of England, they, were, they, they took the, the code and they, they kind of provided an implementation of it. So I'll just uh, leave you with this slide here in terms of any of the links if you want to um, check those out. What I would like to say is a big thank you to Sally Buchanan and her team at uh, Falkirk Council within the Fair of Falkirk team because uh, you know all of this stems really from their ideas and enthusiasm and hard work. Uh, with the partners in terms of pulling all that information together and defining you know, how they wanted this uh, application to work and what they wanted to have in it. Um, and also OSM UK, particularly Jez Nicholson, who was very um, you know, generous with his time. Uh, but you know, that, that, was, that really helped us to, to kind of get things moving in terms of our use of, of OSM um, and defining those tagging schemas. And that is me. So thanks very much for listening. Thank you so much, Alison. I see we already have some questions. So, up. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. It looks great. I wondered if you had any um, data about the usage and the impact that it's had. Uh, we don't yet. I think it's something that. Um, the Fira Falkirk team are quite keen are quite keen to look at. Um, so that might be something that we can take forward with them in the future. Um, because obviously it looks great, but who's using it, to what extent it actually benefits those directly. Because obviously where you're saying digital access is an issue, it's an online system. Um, and yeah, we would like to think that frontline staff are able to signpost and so on, but um, 
Yeah, I think it's something that the team are, are quite keen to look at within Vera Falkirk and hopefully we'll get some data that we can then do something with. Thank you. Hi, yeah, I also just wondered if there has been any take up or interest from other LA's, uh, local authorities? Um, like I say, I think there was, um, maybe not formally, uh, but down in Bath, they had done a kind of ha ha hackathon type event and um, they'd certainly taken, taken the code on GitHub and, and got, it, got it running. Um, so it's, it's all there. I think it's kind of about getting the message out. I mean, as part of the project, uh, we published a series of blogs on what was going on, um, trying to sort of target that towards a wider local government audience. Um, I don't know if there might be reluctance to kind of move into a kind of more open data space by some local authorities. I think some are at, at different points in their kind of thinking around that. Um, but I would like to see that, certainly. Do you have any rough figures for um, how many of the people in poverty do have internet access? And also, how much is illiteracy a problem that if they could access, they might have difficulty reading it? Yeah, um, I think that would probably be a question for the, the Fear of Falkirk team. And they, they may well have that kind of information. Um, obviously, digital access is a huge barrier. Um, I'm not sure to what extent literacy um, might be also. Um, but I think it's finding, finding the ways to reach those people who otherwise might not be able to, to, to kind of access this um, and that will be the kind of the kind of sort of rollout engagement piece within the local authority and, and with partners and so on to say look this is a resource if people come to you with a need please make sure that you are aware and can use this so that you can signpost so it might be that you know this isn't directly public facing in in those instances there's a kind of intermediary to go through, but it, it, it's just having that engagement going on within the organisation to make sure that happens. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alison. Thank you.